when I think about the relationship, and I do a lot between uh, rock climbing and, and playing, there are, there are any number. One is, of course, all the preparation you have to do to, to get ready for such adventures. But the one that f comes to mind as, as the strongest analogy between the two is, is the, uh, the factor of, of having your head together and being really strong mentally. Because there are those moments in both climbing and performing, crux moments. spot and and the temptation is to is to cry out mommy help or God come help or something and, and you really can't you can't depend on those two it's you who has to do it and uh, the, the same feelings occur in, in a performance sometimes there's this little uh, gasp of fear that overtakes you and and you think do I really know this passage can I do this and uh, it would be so nice to have somebody come bail you out but <laughs> But I think the healthy thing is to realize they're not around and I've got to do it. And I've prepared myself and I can't do it. If I'm in good running shape and good climbing shape, I feel together as a person. And I always come back from those kinds of adventures feeling inspired to make music. I feel that inspiration or imagination, intuition, call it what you will, is crucial in the process of finding a vision of a piece. Technical perfection alone really only deals with the outer layers of a piece, and it's the inner life of a piece that concerns me mostly. The Schumann Fantasy, which you've just heard, was composed during the famous and intense romance between Robert and Clara Wieck, and expresses in its intimacy and seriousness the composer's very deep feelings for her. The piece I'd now like to play is also inspired by thoughts of Clara. In fact, it was Robert's wedding gift to her. I've always felt Schumann to be a kindred spirit. I suppose it's the poetry and the sensitive side that he has. When, his, when he's his most eloquent, uh, his music touches me as deeply as any composer's.
back in. There's a climb in El Dorado Canyon, just outside of Boulder, uh, called Rosie Crucifixion. It's one of those climbs that people talk about a lot. And it's just this really intimidating steep wall. And I guess it's, it's that whole thing about climbing that, that intrigues me, is that the, um, the element of fear. And this one, it reputedly, is, is right at the level of difficulty that would give me a big challenge. You look up and, and you can see uh, you can see that crack, and you can see the possible handholds. You look over on the wall, and you see a few little things for your feet, which you know are going to be really crucial. Yeah. Goodness. Right. You hit that pin yet? It's a temptation. It's got to squeeze there. Maybe another mover so you can get a rest on the finger lock. Oh. Well, good effort. Bad effort. <laughs> You're looking good. There's a, looks like a, one more fixed pin. Okay. To get into. The crack's right up in there. Uh, the crack is running out, but for sure the, some very good handhold. People ask me a lot about oh, the, um, the danger to my hands. I'm a pianist, and here I am out climbing uh, uh, difficult climbs. I really don't think much about it. There are times when, when uh, I'm doing certain kinds of climbs, uh, finger cracks and things like that, that I'm quite aware if my feet were to slip, all my weight were to, to fall on that finger, it could you know, slice or, or, or something. I always come back with little scrapes and scratches, but I've never uh, injured my hand badly. Reach that pin yet? Not quite. I've got to get a stance right here. Playing the piano, uh, it's not so much a question of strength in your fingers as, as agility and All right. flexibility and endurance. And uh, there are plenty of people out there who could just grip my hand and, and probably crush my hand a bit. So I, my hand really is not that strong, but it's, it's agile. You've almost got it, man. Being up there, wow. having completed it, I was. I was really out of breath. There's this wonderful rush of relief that it was over. On, I'd uh, clipped into my anchor. I could look down, see Bill there again, shout down to him that all was okay. And, uh, realized this this dream in, a, in, a, in effect uh, of doing that pitch you know, has finally come true. You need some more slack? Yeah. Good. Where did you learn that? What? The Your fiddling, fiddling tune. From Ellie, don't you know? Yeah. Well, you're really getting good on that little fiddle diddle. Oh. Sissy, did you keep your elbow down? No. Did you keep two down on the yum bum 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 bum? Did you keep two down. Let's try it again. You want to do it again? Keep, keep your elbow down. Chrissy's such a delight to, to have around. She's obviously very, very talented and gifted. Uh, in music, everything's very natural for her, at least, and she works at it uh, a lot harder than I did when I was her age. But I, uh, actually, I don't have any big ambitious plans for her as as a musician.
I hold back a little bit. I hold back a little bit. You could hold back even more, I think. Good. What else? Uh, just be. Think of the color and just. Think of the color. Let it mellow. My theory, I don't know. It's, it's a crazy theory. Is that if you're if you just feel it more strongly, somehow your ear or your fingers or a combination will find some way to do it. I, I truly believe that that. Uh, that my progress as a pianist has not come from some intellectual appreciation, but just feeling more strongly. It seems like I live with music constantly. There's music running through my brain all the time. If I'm out running, it's in my brain. If Even when I'm climbing, it's in my brain. I, when I carry on a conversation with somebody, often it's back there somewhere. And that can be uh, very frustrating because uh, there are times when I just like to be totally free of it. But um, it, it also helps in some respects because I'm constantly, it means that I'm, there's a part of me that's constantly searching for a better way to make music sound, to make music work. I use the word inspiration to, to describe the, the way I feel after I come back from uh, climbing or running adventures. I don't mean by that that I, for example, I might sit down at the piano and play a big crescendo and think uh, some visual imagery of, of a mountain looming up in the distance. It's not that way at all. My inspiration comes strictly and solely from the musical relationships of the notes. Uh, those adventures I have in the out-of-doors help me to be more attuned to the beauties that I find in the notes. faster tempo immediately, and then on top of that, maybe a little faster as, as it goes upwards. It will naturally kind of chill on. Let's try that one more time. Yeah. One. There's just no way that Rachmaninoff's music is as great as the um, great composers, German composers, Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Schubert, and so forth. The w wisdom and depth of expression in these composers is what makes their music so great. But for a pianist, playing Rachmaninoff is uh, a great joy if you have that technique that makes it work. I also must say that I identify a lot with the brooding, melancholy, qualities on the one hand and uh, excitement, energy, ecstasy on the other.
I found that to be successful in performance, for me, means finding an ideal balance between two seemingly opposed aspects of the music making process. One is the intellectual analytical side, and the other is the inspirational or intuitive side. Maybe I'm something of a throwback to older times, but I really feel that my experiences in the out of doors enhance my intuitive powers, and that helps me make my very best music. Thank you.